Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can add trails to an animation inside of DaVinci Resolve 16.1. So you can apply this effect to basically anything you're going to add into your shot that would be separate from the background image itself, such as a animated character or particle fire effects or that kind of thing. And it's not too hard to implement. And we would do this over on the Fusion Composition page. So first you... So in order to create a fusion composition effect from scratch, we're going to open up the effects library, go to effects, and drop a fusion composition somewhere into our timeline. So I'm going to go over here to where we have this blank fusion composition, uh, select it from the timeline with the left click, and then go over to the fusion tab. So really quickly, I'll add in the base animation to the node section down here. And just so you know, the animation I'm bringing in is just a series of PNG images, PNG so they're transparent, and if you bring in a group that's numbered like this into the media pool, then you can actually drag the animation all as one item into your node editor. And then that can be your import animation. So with these images brought in as a node, we're going to want to assign them to a image plane for display purposes. So I'm going to right click and do add tool and go to 3D image plane, feed the media input into the image plane so that it has data to display. And then we're going to need to render that image plane out so that it can finally be connected back into the media output. So if we have this set up at this point and we go to frame zero through four, we should be able to see that animation very briefly. Now, in this case, it's a four frame animation. So it's only playing during the first four frames of this effect. If we want that to loop, we can click on the media in and check loop. And now it's going to loop for the entire duration of this effect. In this case, that's fine since it's just a walk cycle animation. So now after the renderer 3D node, we're going to want to apply the trails effect after that. So I'm going to right click on the line right in front of it, do add tool and then go down to effect and then trails. So when we do this, the character will have a trail behind it. So in this case, what you'll see is a bunch of the previous images getting cycled behind it. If we had movement, then it would actually leave a trail behind the character. And obviously we'll have to do some settings to make it look more like a trail rather than permanently leaving the image behind after a frame is complete. So one of the first things I'm going to want to do is shrink this character way down so it's not taking up our entire video frame. You can see here the 1920 by 1080 pixels video shot is almost entirely just this pixel art character. So I'm going to go to the image plane, go to the transform tab and scale it way down to something like 0.25 and that shrinks our character dramatically. Next I want to set the initial position of our image plane um, over to the left so that the character can walk over to the right across a certain number of frames. So I'll just move this over here to about negative 1.6 so that it's off the screen and then I'll keyframe that. I'll go to about frame 60 so that it's faster than in the original clip I was showing you guys at the start. And I'll move it over to about positive 1.6 so that it goes from just off the left side of the screen all the way over to the right. And then I'm also going to take the render end time and I'm going to change this to, I think we want 60 frames, it may be 59. Uh, one of those two. Okay, so let's go to frames, everyone hit play now and see how that looks. Uh, assumably it should end at frame 60 here and then cycle. Okay, yep, that looks about right. Now if we zoom in here, you can see that the trail that's getting left behind is not only permanent, but it's also creating way too many copies of the character as she moves across the screen. And also we might argue that the walk cycle is moving a little bit fast. So the easy thing first, if you want to slow down your animation, then you can right click in front of media one and go to add tool and miscellaneous and then time speed. And with this node, you can slow down the speed of the animation that's playing. So I could make that 0.5 and make it move at half speed. You're going to want to change interpolation mode to nearest rather than blend, because uh, if you have it on blend mode, then it will kind of create its own after image that's similar to trails. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be customizing it purely with trails. So we don't want that time speed after image. And uh, now we can start working on the trail itself. So over here on trails, we have a bunch of settings we can play around with. Uh, let's start with the gain. So at gain 1.0, the image never goes away. But if we lower this down to basically any value less than that, then what will happen is that after a certain amount of time, the image will fade away, which is probably going to be what you want. So if you want a shorter trail with less images behind it, then lower the gain down. 
the lower, the closer to zero you have the gain, the less of a trail you're going to have. So it kind of depends on just what you want there. And now with that set, we can kind of clearly see what we've got going on here. So I'm going to zoom in a little more. And now we can just watch the trail and loop while we work on it. Uh, by the way, if you need to loop your video, then make sure you click on this loop button over here and the timeline controls. So you might notice that the image that's trailing behind the girl is basically a perfect copy of the original sprite and it's very easy to tell what it was before. If you want to blur that out, you can change the blur size from 0 to some value above that and that'll make it a lot harder to tell exactly what the trailing image is. So that may or may not be a desirable effect for you. Two settings at the bottom you can mess around with to adjust the color and brightness of your trail is alpha gain and burn in. So if you decrease the alpha gain, kind of like so, or you increase the burn in, then I find that what it's going to do is kind of overexpose your image. It's going to get brighter or more colorful. You could use a combination of those two. Uh, another option is to actually change the apply mode. So this is basically a color composite mode that we're talking about here, which you can do on base video clips when you have like one video clip layered over another one. The color composite modes like screen and dissolve. You can think of this as the trail effect being kind of an effect layered on top of your original animation. And then it gets applied with the color composite mode like videos layered on top of each other can also have. So with modes like screen, it will kind of brighten up the bottom image. You can use modes such as darken if you want to have a black trail behind the character, or in this case, the character by default is actually a completely black silhouette in this case. If you want to bring the character back in, then you can check merge under so that the character itself will display as normal, but there'll still be that black trail following it behind. It's up to you if you want it to be a shadow or a character that has a shadow trailing it. So another thing that we can do is to space out the positioning of these trailing sprites. So we can do that with a X offset. So if we make that a negative X offset, then each trailing sprite is going to be moved to the left of the previous one by an amount of the X offset. So the first one gets moved, in this case, negative 0.23 units. And then the next one would be double that and then three times that and four times that. Okay, so let's talk about a couple more options you have available to you for editing the trail. If you want to adjust the position of each trailing image with respect to each other, you can add in an X offset or a Y offset. So if you want each image to move further to the left of the previous image, you can decrease the X offset. So by adding in the negative 0.31 value, you can see that the trailing images are now way more to the left of each other than they were at zero. So likewise, you can do the same thing with Y offset. If you want each character to be moving up, you can add Y offset. Or if you want each of the trailing images to go down, then you can add in the Y offset. And I suppose if you wanted to have fun, what you could do is over time you could animate this property. So setting a bunch of keyframes and then having it bob up and down could be kind of fun. And another option is to adjust the scale. So if you want the images that are behind to shrink as they fade behind your character, uh, then lower the scale from 1.0 to something beneath that. And what you'll notice is that the trailing images get smaller and smaller as they start to fade out more and more. One last option here is rotation. So if you want the characters to rotate a certain angle from each other as they get more and more distant away from the original character, then adding in a rotation will incrementally rotate the characters. So the first one will be 16.3 degrees here and then double that and then three times that and so on. And you'll get this kind of circular effect. Of course, that would be another property you could animate as well to get some fun results. Okay, so that's roughly the gist of what you can do with the Trails tool. I'm going to, as a final thing, I'm going to change the Apply Mode over from Normal to Darken, and I'm going to leave it as Merge Under, because I want to use this as a fun effect. So I'm going to take this clip over here, and with our Trails effect made, I'm going to apply it to the text that we were showing at the start of the video. And what will happen now is that the character won't be visible until she's walking over our trails text here and then she'll appear as a black shadow. So I think this should give us an interesting video effect once we go ahead and export it and get everything as it should be. So that's pretty much going to be it for this video on trails. Obviously, there's a lot of uses you could do with this kind of thing. 
So I hope that this tutorial is helpful for you guys. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.